Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Monorat die roll deck featuring Delina Wild Mage as our commander, 4 mana, 3 2 Elf Shaman. Whenever Delina attacks, choose target creature we control and then roll a d20. If we get between a 1 and 14, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary, and at the end of combat we have to exile this creature. If we get between a 15 and 20, which is a 30% chance, we get to create one of those tokens and then roll again. So we get a very lucky, we could technically keep rolling over and over again until we make enough tokens to kill the opponent on the spot. Of course not very likely to happen, but even just copying a creature once or twice can be good enough as we have some powerful Enter the Battlefield abilities to synergize with Delina. Then it's also very important that we can give Delina haste, as it inherently doesn't have haste or any other Enter the Battlefield ability itself, so by giving Delina haste we can at least get immediate value once we play our commander. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, split up into a few different categories, starting with a cheap spot removal, where we have a Lightning Bolt, just a very efficient removal spell, there's Spikefield Hazard, can deal 1 damage or be played as a land. A Braid can deal 3 damage to a creature or destroy an artifact. And then Bone Crusher can deal 2 damage and then a 4-3 afterwards. That can also maybe be copied by Delina. The next category are the Haste Enablers, starting with the Barbarian class. This one's a little bit expensive to eventually give the team haste, but it still has extraordinary synergy with Delina. On level 1, if we would roll 1 or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus 1 and ignore the lowest roll. So that makes it much more likely that we can keep getting between 15 and 20 with Delina and potentially combo kill the opponent. And then on chapter 2, whenever we roll one or more dice, target creature we control gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains a menace until end of turn. So that's potentially a way to give Delina some evasion to attack past a single blocker, as well as deal a ton of extra damage. And then eventually on level 3, we can give our team haste. Then we have a Bloodlust Inciter, Goblin Motivator, and the Cavalry, which can all tap to give a creature haste, so it doesn't cost us any additional mana. Boots of Speed cost 1 mana to equip to give 1 extra power and haste, and then the Swiftfoot Boots cost 1 mana as well to give Hexproof and haste, so a great way to protect our commander. Then there's a Bitter Reunion, which we can use for some early card selection, and then 1 mana to sacrifice to give our creatures haste until end of turn. Stormseeker can give any creature plus 1 power and haste until end of turn. There's the Ogre Battle Driver, which will give any creature that enters 2 extra power as well as haste until end of turn. And then Azariel can also pump our team and give them haste until end of turn, as well as making devil tokens. And finally Perforos Bronze Blooded can also turn into a creature if we have enough devotion for it, as an indestructible enchantment creature god, and also gives other creatures haste, and can potentially sneak creatures into play from our hand if we pay 2 and a red, although for the most part we'll be casting our creatures. And then if we have enough devotion we can also turn Perforos into a creature and copy it with Delina, since it will remove the legendary type of it, so we can have multiple multiple copies of Perforos attacking the opponent, so if Delina is the only creature in play it can of course also copy itself to get 3 extra damage in at the very least. And then the next category are the ways to accelerate our mana to hopefully get Delina in play a little bit sooner or be able to replay it if our opponent removes it without suffering too much. So at 2 mana there's a Wily Goblin to make a treasure when it enters, also adds 2 red devotion and we have some devotion synergies throughout the deck. Then we've got a 2 mana a ramp artifact that we see in a lot of different decks, Arcane Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone, and then Ornithopter of Paradise, also a mana creature that we get to play in a red deck which doesn't come up very often. Then Captain Lannery makes treasures whenever it attacks, potentially increasing its power when we sacrifice the treasure as well. Fable starts out making a Shaman token which can also make more treasures when it attacks and gives us a bit of card selection. And of course since we have so many great enter battlefield abilities throughout the deck, Reflection of Kiki Jiki can also be very powerful. Then Hazard's Monument will discount all our red creatures by one and let us discard and draw whenever we cast a creature spell, so that also gives us a bit of card selection, maybe get rid of additional haste enablers if we've already found one. Heraldic Banner will pump all our red creatures by one, as well as tap for red mana. And then Chandra can be used as removal, as well as make double red with the plus one ability. Hedron Archive and Key to the Archive both make two extra mana. And then a Solemn will also enter the battlefield finding an extra land, and when it dies we get to draw a card, so also has nice synergy with Delina. And the Rapacious Dragon makes two treasure tokens when it attacks, so also so don't mind copying that one to generate extra mana. Then the next category are just good creatures that have nice enter the battlefield abilities 
or that we don't mind copying with a Delina, including the Irreverent Revelers, can either enter with haste or destroy an artifact. Then there's the Plundering Barbarian, can either destroy an artifact or create a treasure token. Professional Facebreaker can also help make additional treasure tokens and potentially sacrifice them for additional card advantage. The Swashbuckler can also enter making a treasure token and can also potentially sacrifice a treasure to give a creature double strike, so that can give Delina double strike if her opponent has a blocker for it, for instance. The Unstoppable Ogre, a 4 1 that when it enters prevents a creature from blocking, so if we copy that with Delina, we can potentially prevent a block, and if we played it in the same turn, we can potentially prevent two creatures from blocking. Seasoned Pyromancer can discard two and then draw two, can even draw two if we're empty handed, which is pretty nice, and if we discard it in non land cards, we get to replace those with 1 1 elemental tokens. The Goblin Chain Whirler is great against any 1 toughness creatures, and a 3 3 first strike is also a nice attacker if we copy it with Delina and deal 1 damage to any blockers, then all of a sudden 4 toughness creatures won't have any profitable blocks either. We've got Fanatic of Mogus as one of the devotion payoffs, can deal damage to the opponent equal to our devotion to rent when it enters, so copy that a few times and the opponent may just be dead already. The Twin Shot Sniper can be channeled for 2 damage, and of course if we play it as a 4 drop, we can also copy it with Delina. The Beetleback Chief can make 2 1 1 goblins when it enters, so it can help us go wide to provide a few blockers, as well as enable some synergies like Amber Cleave becoming very cheap to play, great with Ogre Battle Driver, pumping our tokens when they enter as well. Then there's the Town Razor Tyrant to maybe blow up an opposing land or keep damaging the opponent over and over again. Demanding Dragon can also deal 5 damage when it enters or for the opponent to sacrifice a creature. Siege Gang will make 3 1 1 goblins and we can sacrifice them to deal 2 damage to any target, so it can also be great when copied with Delina. Terror of the Peaks doesn't have an ETB effect itself, but whenever another creature enters, it will deal damage equal to its power to any target, so it can also be very devastating. And then Cavalier of Flame adds a lot of red devotion, can also be activated to give our team extra power and haste until end of turn, and when it enters we can discard a few cards to maybe draw, and that can also improve our hand to find more action. And then at 6 mana there's Combustible Gear Hulk. when it enters the opponent can either take a bunch of damage or let us draw a few cards, and Doomscar Titan will give our team plus one plus so and haste until end of turn when it enters, and can also be foretold so we can cast it for 5 mana as opposed to 6, so it can also be very nice when copied with Delina, especially for going wide with a few creatures. The Earth Cult Elemental is another direct rolling card, forcing the opponent to sacrifice a permanent when it enters. Morog potentially gives us additional attack steps and can be quite devastating, especially when copied with Delina, as it will also increase our creature's power. And then the Tyrant is a dragon from the Brother's War, a 4-5 flyer with fire breathing, and when it enters it deals 4 damage to any target. There's the Burning Suns, dealing 3 to an opponent or planeswalker, and 3 damage to up to 1 target creature as well. And then Meteor Golem, when it enters, can destroy any target a non-land permanent an opponent controls. And then the miscellaneous category includes a few ways to give our commander evasion, in case our opponent has a few blockers back. Zephyr Boots can give our commander flying, and a bit of card selection if it hits the opponent. And then Key to the City can make our commander unblockable potentially, by discarding a card, and then when it untaps we can pay 2 mana to draw. Harmonic Prodigy can copy Delina's attack trigger, so we're guaranteed at least 2 copies. There's the Comet Celebrant to give us an additional attack step when we exert it. There's Torbran to let our red permanents deal two more damage, and also adding a lot of red devotion. And copying Torbran can also be very fun since it's no longer legendary, so we can control multiple copies, and then each copy will let us deal additional damage, so it stacks very nicely. Penharmonicon is a way to double up on our Enter the Battlefield abilities. Then Embercleave can be very cheap to play in a deck, producing lots of attacking creatures, and then is also a way to potentially let Delina survive if her opponent has a larger blocker. And then finally Fiery Emancipation to triple our damage output can also be very fun and deal a ton of extra damage. And then a mana base has a few goodies, Castle Embereth to pump the team, and then as a creature land, Dwarven Mine typically gets to make an extra Dwarf token. And then plenty of mountains, we've got the Crucible to make extra tokens, Access Tunnel can also be a way to give Delina unblockable until end of turn, and finally Nykthos can also generate a bit of extra mana if we have a lot of rent devotion in play. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Scarab God, so usually a control build. Well, our hand has potential, Goblin actually making quite a bit of devotion for Nykthos. Can set up a turn 3 Archive to help ramp. And the uh, general card quality is pretty high. They may actually counter the Goblin since Scarab God can bring it back, but they let that one slide. 
So we'll see if we can tap out for Archive, or if we want to take it slow, maybe go for Fable first. And that way I don't use my Treasure token just yet. Although, it's a close call. I guess upside of playing Archive next turn is that I can still cast another spell alongside it. So we'll give Fable a try. That one gets cancelled. At least not a creature that Scarab God can bring back. Could also play Perforos next turn. Although Archive plus Bone Crusher could be pretty good too. And there's a Fanatic, so our Devotion Synergies are coming together nicely. Hedron Archive, and then I can just pass with Stomp available. Assuming this resolves. It does. Next turn Perforos to maybe give Delina haste. And then we're not too far from uh, turning this into a creature. Could have also cast a Bone Crusher, which would have been reasonable. Inciter. So if I play Inciter, let's say I also play Bone Crusher Giants. Then I can still activate Nykthos and potentially play Perforos. That sounds fun. Opponent dissipates. So I could give Delina a try. Or I could play a Fanatic of Mogus. And then do we have enough mana next turn to play Perforos and play Delina? Maybe with a land? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Deal for damage, attack for one. And then next turn we might be able to both play Perforos and Delina. And let's see, Perforos gives other creatures haste, but the Insider could give Perforos haste. Karn Silex. Alright, that's gonna be a problem if uh, that can stick the landing. Torbrain is another interesting draw. So I could play Torbrain and then still play Delina afterwards. And just forego Perforos, since we can give Delina haste. Alright, opponent's gonna Tails end. So in that case, we'll just go for Delina. Give it haste, copying Fnatic, and uh, hopefully just kill the opponent on the spot. Alright, let's roll some dice. Roll the two, so we don't get to copy it more than once. Although six damage is still just enough here. Exaxes against Scarab God, facing quite a few counter spells. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Giruda, so not as companion, but as commander. And our hands got all the pieces we need if we can pick up a land or two with monuments, discounting our red creatures, got some haste enablers, and then uh, some nice payoffs. But it may be a tad too slow, without any early acceleration. A ley line, I guess, nerfs Cavalier, but that's fine. So we've got our third land, and if Cavalry dies we still have Stormseeker as a haste enabler. And then Monuments is a great way to make sure we keep hitting our land drops. Play Monuments. That resolves, attack for two. And then uh, next turn could technically run out Delina, but we'll see if the coast is clear. Chupacabra kills cavalry, so we'll need another haste enabler now. Okay, so got a couple options. Stormseeker plus Prodigy. We could just play Solemn, get an extra land, and then next turn with 5 mana. I can run out Stormseeker plus Delina. Ideally, I guess we would have 6 mana to play Prodigy, Stormseeker, and Delina all at once. So. Yeah, might be worth it. Of course, Simulacrum is not going to draw when it dies anymore because of Leyline. So that's the drawback. 
but it's still the most mana efficient play here. And then could maybe ditch Cavalier, even though it does provide a lot of devotion for Fnatic. So I don't mind keeping it. So maybe we decline. Alright, opponent has got a Recycler, which can come back from the graveyard. And they've got some mana untapped. Alright, so step one, Prodigy, discard Meteor Golem, which we're pretty far from casting. And Perforos is another haste enabler. So could run that out, could go for Cavalier. Perforos they might counter as well. And then we'll uh, decline. If this resolves, I can maybe get rid of Stormseeker now. But we'll wait for that. Opponent kills Prodigy, so they had removal at the ready. So glad we played Perforus. Time for Giruda, and we'll see what they hit. Well, that's a way to copy Giruda to potentially keep going. And that's what they'll do. And looks like a Town Razor Tyrant is what they found in our deck. Okay, so pretty important turn coming up. I could play Delina and play Fnatic. Devotion is still not quite high enough for Perforos. If I play Cavalier, then I wouldn't be able to play Delina just yet. This only happens at the uh, beginning of their upkeep. So it's not going to copy Chupacabra right away. Yeah, interesting spot. Ideally, we play Cavalier and then play Fnatic, copy it with Delina. So maybe I play Cavalier and then just discard the uh, Stormseeker, which I no longer need with Perforos out. And then wait to go for Delina and Fnatic. And one land can go. And a Wily Goblin increases my devotion, so Perforos can attack. Sure, I guess that's uh, pretty good here. And does Cavalier attack? I don't think so. And then hopefully next turn Delina plus Fnatic could be effective. Now that Perforos is a creature, it could die to an exile removal spell. But looks like our opponent takes out Cavalier instead. So that does reduce our devotion, but we still have enough to animate Perforos next turn if we play both Fnatic and Delina. So, gotta give that a try. And then Delina first to increase our devotion. Discard Ornithopter. Even though I guess it could tap for mana right away, I don't think it really does much for us. Beetleback Chief, not as good as Fnatic. And sure, we'll discard it. Okay, let's attack. Copy Fnatic. Copy it again. And that may be enough here. 14 damage, and then our combat step as well. And our opponent at minus 18, yeah, that was successful. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Gitrog monster, always a scary deck. My hand needs to be pretty fast to be able to keep up. This hand leaves a lot to be desired. I think I need a 2-mana ramp artifact to have a chance. Well, Chandra's not bad, we have a haste enabler, this can blow up a ramp artifact. Might be worth a try. Can also make a treasure token if opponent doesn't present a target.
overgrown tomb into skull prophets. So can uh, hang back. So that can potentially mill additional lands to enable Gidrog. Skewed Swarm, also scary. Although, wouldn't be making copies until they get more lands in play. Ooh, and a Goblin Shea Whirler. About to perfect draw here. Very satisfying against Skewed Swarm. Next turn we get Chandra, ramping into Fire Emancipation as well. So yeah, that was a clutch top deck, but never count out the Gidrog monster. Mindstone, so can blow that up with a Barbarian, perhaps. Or we can get a Chandra going and then finish off Gidrog next turn. Yeah, I think that's better. And I'll just plus one. You wanna play with fire, huh? This will be easy. So with a land I could play Emancipation and then Bolts can deal enough damage to take out Gitrog. So I think that's what we're going for. An attack, and that's gonna be a ton of damage. So we may not even get the chance to play Delina. Opponent's at one. So it's gonna be tricky for them to get back. Maybe Casualties of War is one card I can think of that would save them. But opponent doesn't have it. And yeah, that was a pretty brutal Chain Whirler. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kalein, Red Black Treasures. Our hands would be good if we can pick up a few lands, so I'll try it. Hopefully set up an early Hedron Archive, and that can help uh, deploy Delina, incite her to give it haste. Shambling Ghast may end up taking out incite her, but still gonna play turn one. Can stomp Kalein. And then Prodigy is a way to double up Delina's triggers. So at the very least we can play a Bone Crusher next turn. Face Breaker is a good one. So now I'm sort of incentivized to block the Shambling Ghast so we don't give them any unnecessary treasures. Even though Inciter is quite powerful here in this hand. I can abrade the Facebreaker next turn. So yeah, maybe we'll hang on to the Inciter and give them the extra treasure. Wily Goblin's not bad, although I still need to abrade now. And we'll hit for one. Alright, so with a land, play Archive. Without one, play Wily Goblin, I think. To set up our Archive on the following turn. Opponent's got a ton of mana in the meantime, thanks to all those treasures. So we're about to face something pretty scary. Kalein will provide a lot of plus one counters as well. Just a paladin for starters. Possible they're hanging on to removal for Delina too. In which case playing Archive is a good way to waste the opponent's mana. Could still play Bone Crusher afterwards. So they maybe feel satisfied using removal spell on the Bone Crusher here. 
And then next turn, how much mana do I have? Six, so I could still play Prodigy and Delina. Yeah, could see that being fine. We're also making our Ember Cleave better. Not gonna bother attacking with Bone Crusher since I don't want Shambling Gas killing inside her. Soul Shatter deals with Bone Crusher, so mission accomplished, I guess. Thrill goes digging, his opponent looking for maybe a creature they can use all those treasure tokens on. And time to get in the red zone, so our opponent might pump their creatures with Paladin. That's fine by me. Alright, we get to untap. So, yeah, maybe we still play it slow here on the Lina if our opponent is hanging on to removal. By playing Beetlebank Chief, we also set up our Ember Cleave nicely. So, we can play Chief. See what the response is, and uh, maybe still play Prodigy. Tank for two. And then they might take out Prodigy end of turn as well. We have enough mana where we can still replay Delina for 6 mana. But of course would prefer to get an attack in right away. Two cards in hand for the opponents. They decline to sink all their mana into Paladin. Downfall kills Prodigy, so it won't be doubling Delina's trigger. So we'll just have to roll high to make up for it. And uh, we'll just take the damage. I can play Delina, try and give it haste, and then still play a 2-mana Ember Cleave. Alright, let's move to combat. And copy Chief. 15, that's a reroll. 13, alright. We get to make 4 more goblins. And Amber Cleave should help Delina survive. Put on blocks with Shambling Ghasts. And with Kalein as well. So I'm kind of fine if Ghast kills Delina since we can easily replay it next turn. And if I put Amber Cleave on Delina, they can still kill the Bloodlust inside her. So I think Amber Cleave goes on Wily Goblin here. Kill Kalein. even though they're not going to have any trouble replaying it. And her opponent concedes. Awesome. So, yeah, goblin tokens get the job done. On to the next one. All right, facing Ugin the Ineffable. So, colorless deck. Don't have any ramp here, so let's take a Mulgan. This hand is, I guess, somewhat reasonable. Just need to pick up uh, a land or two. And then monuments can help me discard one of these, which are kind of redundant. So turn one, go for Insider. Automaton could eventually be removed by Lightning Bolt. Moonsilver Key grows Automaton. I think I'm still in favor of Monument on 3 here. And then next turn we could already attack with Delina. Skyclave Relic grows Automaton. And Jada's Gifts, alright, now I'm regretting not using Bolt since our opponent was able to play two more artifacts. And they now have a blocker for Delina, potentially. Opponent attacks, alright, I'll take it. If they stayed back, then I might have gone for Archive to set up a bigger turn later. But if they want to race, I'm happy to race. 
So play Delina, and then we can even play Barbarian class to improve our odds. Discard Drawbridge. So we get to roll two dice now. Sadly hit a 14 when we needed a 15, so one short. With a land we can play Gearhulk, give that haste and copy it. That would be fun. If not, we can always access Tunnel Delina if the Automaton stays back. Or just attack into it and then Bolt can finish it off. Fable can give the token haste, still doesn't bolt automaton and pay the ward cost. I guess we can uh, level up Barbarian class as well, so Delina gets the extra 2 power, so it can actually attack into automaton. So I guess that's my entire turn. Even if it's not the most mana efficient play, it still keeps up Lightning Bolt. All right, now we do get to copy again. Let's keep going. Double 20. And now we missed. Should have saved one of those critical rolls. One mana short of bolting automaton to finish it off, but yeah, bonus at six. So they're definitely within range of a lightning bolt. Yeah, Barbarian class, great synergy with Delina, of course. Last turn, I guess I could have potentially tried to play Chain Warler to draw with Monument, and if we draw a mountain, we could still level up Barbarian class. But I think it worked out. So Tomaton suited up with Jada's Gifts. Key can find a land. Maybe they can gain two life with a fountain. And then the uh, Cosmos Elixir will gain two as well. Forsaken Monument is what they got instead. So their opponent's going big. Elixir gains two and scries. And then we can just bolt upstairs. And then next turn, just with a single die roll, we'll give Delina plus two power and menace. So that should be lethal. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. I'll do the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Polar Werebear. It's a blue-green ram slash mutate, you could say. And my hand has potential, turn to idle. I think I'll be playing Hazard tapped on one, so we can curve out. And then... The Lina plus Fnatic could be quite powerful. Unstoppable Ogre. Doesn't really work against the Werebear as long as it has Hexproof. Captain Lannery is nice. So, can play that. Start making treasure. If they block with a pair, I could still pump Captain Lannery, so our opponent takes it. A glimpse. This is a giant, so they'll be able to replay it later. Okay, so playing the Lina is reasonable. Could also, let's see, attack and then I always forget when to play a land with Morog. So whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures. So we have to play our land second main. Otherwise, we don't get to untap our creatures, basically. Um, so, yeah, attack with Lannery. And then play Morog, play a land. And attack again. Not bad. Put on chumps. Missing a way to give Delina haste at the moment. But we may not need it. 
Ooh, Fire Emancipation with Fanatic of Mogus. That's quite the combo. So don't have a land drop for Morag, unfortunately. But uh, Emancipation attack seems good enough. Morag threatening 18 damage. So your opponent's gonna have to block. And our opponent concedes, yeah. Next turn we can do the math on Fanatic of Mogus. Let's see, we would probably not have enough mana to play anything else alongside it, but just Fanatic with, let's say, 6 Devotion, assuming this trades. That's uh, 6 times 3, 18 damage, just uh, directly to the opponent. And then if we ever get to copy it with Delina, that's going to be pretty awesome as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Athreos, Shroud Veiled. So black-white kind of ETB effect deck, if you will. Our hand is missing some acceleration. Multiple ways to give evasion, so those are a bit redundant, even though we can discard boots to key or the other way around. I think I'm still looking for a little bit of ramp in my opening hand. And this is better. Both Monument and Banner. Can uh, speed up playing Delina. And Celebrant and Torbrain, especially alongside Emancipation, could be quite effective. Can abrade the Altar of the Pantheon. Good synergy with Gods. And uh, probably want to go for Solemn next turn, so we'll play Banner over Monument since we won't get a discount for artifact creatures that aren't a red. Opponent's got to ruin Solemn, it's only fair. So what's our plan here? Next turn, Solemn. Could also go with Monument plus Comot Celebrant. But I think I still prefer Solemn here. And then we're waiting to find a way to give Delina haste, essentially. So we can set up a devastating attack out of nowhere. Gonti can be a good blocker, but at least they won't find many removal spells in our deck. Chain Whirler, excellent once we have Emancipation or Torbran in play. Uh, let's see, 6 mana. So I don't quite have enough for Torbran and Chain Whirler, so I'll just play the Emancipation, even though Black White might have some ways to remove our enchantment. If they don't, next turn we can uh, Chain Whirler to wipe their board. Village rights sacking Gonti as opposed to Solemn is a bit surprising. And yeah, Mortify destroys our enchantment, unfortunately. So in that case, play Monuments. And then we want to combine Torbran and Chain Warler in the same turn. Uh, this is a warrior, so it doesn't trigger twice of Prodigy. So which creature do we want to play next? Could also just play Delina here. If they kill it, so be it. If not, next turn we can have some serious fun. And then Solemn could also attack here to trade. Since the opponent could get more value from their Solemn once Athreus comes down. Mountain's good. So, yeah, go for Delina. And then I could still play Prodigy as well. Could also discard my lands once I play Delina. Although if they remove Delina, I might prefer to have more mana available. So I think I'm happy with my hands. Just play Prodigy and pass. Sweeper could be somewhat painful, although we still have some goodies in hand. So there's Athros, opponent's tapped out. And now we get to have a pretty powerful turn with Torbrain plus Goblin Chain Whirler. Don't think I need to discard anything. Attack. And then Delina can copy legendary creatures since the copies won't be legendary. So get multiple copies of Torbrain, and that should just be game here. 
could have also taken a different approach with Zariel and maybe Comot Celebrants taking additional Comot steps. But this should get there as well. Probably should have played Chain Warlord's second main phase so we get even more damage by controlling multiple Tor Brains. But uh, yeah, opponent seems very dead. I rolled a 1, that's fine. 14, so no rerolls. But still plenty of damage thanks to Triple Tor Brain giving all our creatures plus 6 damage essentially. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Mono Black Lich, so typically a combo deck with Paradox Engine. So, can expect quite a bit of removal. Our hands, not terrible. Turn to Cold Steel Heart, don't know if I need key to the city in this matchup, but it's not gonna have many blockers. So, yeah, don't expect this to go well, but I'll still give it a try. And then maybe I should just play Dwarven Mine turn 1, as opposed to trying to make a Dwarf token with it in case we don't draw more mountains. And then we'll have to decide if we want to play a Celebrant or just ramp straight into Delina. If we pick up more mana, we can maybe wait to play Doomscar Titan alongside Delina in the same turn to give it haste. Although that seems ambitious. So, could also go for a Beetleback Chief. And that combines well with Doomscar Titan once we get that going. Delina has the highest upside, I just don't think it's gonna stick around. And then next turn, what's our plan? Can play Celebrant and Fortel. So maybe I'm better off just playing the Chief, because then a Foretold Titan can pump all the tokens. And this is a bit better against Spot Removal. Frank's in Arena for card draw. Alright, so... Yeah, Foretold Titan plays Celebrant versus play Delina. I think I like Celebrant plus Titan. And then we might be able to just uh, deal a ton of damage without Delina next turn. So let's attack. Could definitely see a sweeper next turn. And if we do, at least we can follow up with Delina and hopefully have it stick around. And this verdict, yeah. At least the chief sticks around. And then now go for Delina. And then could play key, but I don't think I'll need it. So hang on to Twin Shot Sniper. And then Doomscar next turn could provide a ton of damage out of nowhere. Black Market, that's fine. So bone tapped out. This goes upstairs. Banner also could have been nice, but uh, don't have the mana to play Banner and Titan, so Titan it is. Smash. Copy Titan. Only copy it once. Is it enough? It sure is. Awesome, so beat Mono Black Control, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing five color shrines. This hand feels a tiny bit too slow without any early acceleration against Shrines. Even though Chandra lines up reasonably well against uh, Life's Origin, they'll still be able to finish off our Planeswalker afterwards. Key on 4 is nice, but we're still missing a couple lands. Alright, this is better. So turn 1, play Boots. Make sure to keep playing Red Sources for Chain Warler. Although, in a Best case scenario, we play Fire Emancipation before playing Chain Warlord. And we might be able to do so thanks to Key now. So we're just ramping nicely. But uh, turn to Chronicler, also one of the best plays for the Shrine deck. Chromatic Lantern for fixing. Still two mana left for a Destiny Spinner. Play Key to the Archive. And which one do we like? The Spark, I guess. Is there anything in hand that's worse than the Spark? 
Could see Fable being a little bit too slow. And then... Opponents got the Sanctum of All, so that can find any of their legendary shrines, so that card is very good. Although, what if we just play Fire Emancipation here? And then next turn Chain Warler, dealing triple damage. That sounds pretty good. Could also just despark the Sanctum of All before it does too much damage. That's probably the safest play. And then I can still play either Delina or Panharmonicon. And Alina makes sense. That way we can maybe copy Chain Warlor as well. Delina can gain flying with the boots. Opponents with a Curse of Silence. So glad we got Delina in play. Okay. Decisions, decisions. Don't quite have the mana to... Play Panharmonicon and Season Pyromancer, that would have been pretty sweet. I can play Chain Warler and then give Delina the boots and then copy Chain Warler. That sounds good. And then next turn, maybe we can play Fire Emancipation while still copying Chain Warler. Alright, so we get to see our Monoret Delina in action, and if you get to curve out with some early acceleration, the deck can be incredibly brutal, especially if you get lucky on the die rolls, but sometimes copying a creature even once can be good enough for a win, as we have some powerful enter battlefield abilities. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.